Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Mission, a Hong Kong action flick from 1999 that was directed by Johnny Toe. Now I've already reviewed five films from this director in separate videos on this channel. Drug War, Running Out of Time, Running Out of Time 2, Running on Karma, and Throwdown. Now he also co-directed Full Time Killer, which I also reviewed. Now, I plan on covering more films from this director because of two reasons. Number one, he's awesome. And number two, his films need to be seen by more people. Now, if you were to ask a fan of Johnny Toe for recommendations, The Mission would likely be one of the first titles mentioned. Now, early on, we meet a triad boss named Lung, who is fortunate to survive a shootout in a nightclub, despite the fact that one of his own bodyguards abandons him along the way. As a viewer, you can understand Lung's motivation to upgrade his security and find a more impressive group of bodyguards. So he calls on some old acquaintances and some new contacts who are played by Anthony Wong, Francis Ng, Roy Chung, and Lam Suet to protect him from a barrage of ambushes by his enemies. So if you're familiar with the aforementioned actors, you know that the mission has an absolutely loaded cast. And those names don't even include Simon Yan, who has a small supporting role in this one. <clears throat> These actors have fantastic chemistry together, and Johnny Toe gives them a lot to work with. As it turns out, the triad boss has had some interactions with a few of these bodyguards in the past, but Francis Ng's character is one of the new guys, and his personality clashes with some of the other team members, more specifically Anthony Wong's character. So it's similar to, like, in real life, a general manager of a sports franchise who brings in a new player on the team, but that instantly disrupts the chemistry of the team. So there's, there's a lack of trust between these guys, these uh, bodyguards, that could affect their job performance in these life-or-death situations. So it's pretty interesting. There is a ton of nonverbal communication in this movie between our protagonists. Lots of eye contact and physical mannerisms are used to get the point across. There's a fun scene involving a wad of, of crumpled up paper. That's one of my favorites of the film because it gives a bit of personality to the characters. This is vintage Johnny Toe stuff, and it's arguably at its peak in this movie. Of course, the lack of verbal exposition places some demands on the viewer to figure some things out for themselves. So, for example... No spoilers here, but one scene shows Francis Ng smacking Anthony Wong in the face multiple times. And as a viewer, the first time you see this movie, you might be like, like, why is he doing this? You know, what did Anthony Wong do in the last scene, scene to make Francis so mad? But if you pay attention to what happened, you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But nobody talks about it. You know what I mean? They just show it. There's another scene during the second half where a dude gets shot in the head while approaching a building. And as a viewer, you're like, like, who was that guy? And why was he shot in the head? You know, um, but as a viewer, you got to think about the situation that has been happening. And then you put two and two together and you, it makes sense. You know, I seem to mention this trait a lot when I'm reviewing Johnny Toe movies, but it needs to be emphasized. He has a very natural way of communicating what's going on between the characters and the audience, and uh, even if it takes a bit of thought on your end, it usually works pretty well. And I prefer this to having a character sit there and explain like why they're doing what they're doing all the time, right? Now, in terms of technical qualities, I love how the camera moves in this film. It's almost as if Toe was attempting to limit edits as much as possible. So he simply moves the camera from character to character all the time, or uses wide shots with all the characters included during the dialogue scenes. He really does avoid the, uh, you know, the, the most cliché shot in film, or one of the most cliché shots is the, the shot, reverse shot. You know how when two people are talking, you'll have a camera that shows one person, like talking to somebody off screen. And then when the other person starts talking, you'll have an edit, and then the, the other camera shows them talking to the person. You know what I mean? Johnny Toe just avoids that shot in this movie like the plague. Like you barely see it at all. And it's kind of refreshing to see. Avoiding that presentation style makes the movie feel very fluid and different. 
Now, during the shootouts also, the sense of geography is vitally important in this film, and the camera work is phenomenal at making you know where everyone is during the action. And speaking of the action, it's slightly more explosive than something like Running Out of Time, but it's less explosive than your typical action blockbuster, because it has a heavy reliance on suspense. So the first shootout involves like a sniper attack at nighttime within an urban area, like an alleyway. And it's all about strategy and like the bodyguards fighting their way to a position where they can hold off the attacker to protect the boss, the crime boss that they're protecting. There's another shootout at a shopping mall that emphasizes positioning even more. You know, they operate as a team and they like cover one another and stuff like that without even saying anything or barely saying anything. So it's, it's pretty cool to see. Um, some of the best sequences in the mission, though, are not even action scenes. After the action finale, there's like a second finale that's more of like a life or death suspense sequence, okay? And it's a really neat sequence of events to end the film. And it's just another example of how Johnny Toe distinguishes himself from other directors. The runtime is 84 minutes. That's lean and mean, and that's just how I like it. The one criticism that I would make is that sometimes the music in this film feels out of place. You know, the scoring is good overall, but at times I found it a bit distracting. Like, right at the beginning of the film, you're just like, it's like, what kind of music is this? I felt like the music could have been uh, chosen maybe a little bit better. But in any case, the mission comes highly recommended. It's a, it's a must-watch. If, if you really want to explore this director's filmography, you have to watch this. It's currently available on YouTube, actually. It does make a great double feature with Exiled, which I will be reviewing on Wednesday. And as always, we'll see you next time.